So, uh, Professor Obeng, who we're having that conversation about scientific innovations, will join us soon. But Dr. Shale is still with us here as we wait for Professor Obeng, who led this innovation, to join to tell us more about this. Uh, let me come back to you, Dr. Shale, before we had to break this conversation and bring in the breaking news. Uh, uh, Professor Obeng was talking about the role of uh, institutions, the universities, in their training talking about teaching and learning of uh, science and uh, because uh, a lot of people have concerns about the way we teach and learn science the reason why a lot of people do not the science students themselves cannot even manufacture toy cars uh, what's the role of the universities in this uh, agenda dr ashali kindly unmute for me kindly unmute for me I have unmuted. Great, so great. Can, now uh, I can hear you loud and clear. Okay, great. Okay, yes. Yeah, so um, the role of the universities and uh, uh, the research community uh, uh, is to find a way to bridge uh, between uh, education and industry. Um, we need to find that tunnel that we will uh, cross the student through uh, to industry. So, um, for instance, for the device that uh, you just showed us, uh, a very interesting one, uh, roast, uh, roasting, planting, and other uh, uh, foodstuffs, uh, there could be possible other components to this uh, device uh, that could automate it uh, by bringing in other concepts relating to, say, uh, machine learning, artificial intelligence, automation. Then uh, the, the hard work of uh, trying to turn it can even also be improved, right? So um, these linkages to to innovation must be very clear to the students that uh, uh, we groom. And then at the, at the end, we expect the innovation as it is now in other parts of the country to uh, end with automation and uh, uh, programmed uh, structures, right? And devices. So uh, that is the sort of role uh, the university and the research uh, institutes can create or can play uh, bridging the gap between uh, academia and industry. Um, thankfully, Professor George Yao Bing has joined us again. He's the lead, uh, I mean, for the group that innovated the corn roasting machine. Prof, congratulations for this milestone. What was the motivation and what went into innovating this machine? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, the motivation is that I am somebody who um, eats the um, roasted plantain sometimes um, uh, during lunchtime, and uh, I, I find it quite healthy. But the any time you know I I visit the w women who roast, what I realize is that the roasting device is very traditional. So they, they experienced a lot of heat loss. And um, when you interview them, they, some of them, um, the feedback is that they, even in the night when they are sleeping, they feel the heat sensation. Um, once they experience this heat loss, it means that they also lose some money. Uh, so I decided that uh, it would be good for us to um, take a critical look at the traditional system of roasting food, namely, you know, plantain, yam, corn, and others, so that we can bring in the engineering design process. So I, I formulated this uh, topic and my students bought into it. They did an initial survey and they realized that it's an interesting area uh, that they can do design, initial design, and, uh, do fabrication and test parameters so we can continue to improve on this. So that, that is basically my, my source of uh, 
motivation. But going forward with innovation, I think my colleague uh, mentioned the fact that, you know, there is the need to bring in, you know, instrumentation and to look at uh, other technologies such that even uh, the part of that rotates, we, we can do it digitally without um, using human efforts. So these are great things, these are ideas. You know, innovation thrives on um, ideas. And it thrives on ideas from people who work in different disciplines. So um, we are always open to new ideas. We have a lot of feedback from uh, people who have uh, seen the roster. And uh, we will continue to work on it. Once you come up with something new or a new method, there's the need for you to continue to work on it so you can, uh, you can innovate you know, bringing new systems. He talks about automation, he talks about artificial intelligence. So these are the, the, the areas that we are going to engage uh, electrical and electronic engineering department and then the uh, department of telecommunication, some of the faculties and the students to work on so that we can continue to improve on the prototype uh, so that um, we can have a product a product of uh, market value, which, which we can sell on the market to generate some income and possibly uh, make business out of it. So that, that is the path we uh, have planned uh, to take this prototype on. Uh, Dr. Shale, I understand that there's a problem of funding uh, with this research, but, but what's the extent, to what extent does this affect uh, scientific innovative research? You, you have to unmute for me, Doc. Okay, sorry there. Um, I think that... Um, the equipment and tools are, are the wheels for which uh, innovation can be motivated, right? So, um, yes, when you go into our institutes and our universities, you find that uh, we don't have the requisite set, uh, setup uh, to even uh, work on anything you think about for you to even become something in, in innovative in the first place, right? So. Um, even uh, in these areas of uh, mechanical engineering and these uh, m uh, heavy metal related innovation uh, systems, uh, I will say that the equipments are not so far fetched. But when you enter into the space of uh, the very uh, uh, the advanced and emerging technologies like uh, uh, nanoscience and technology and mechatronics and those other very uh, uh, highly rated ones, it becomes very much more difficult because the the equipment that we need we need in the labs are in the millions of dollars, and it is mostly the government that uh, provide in in the outside world, right, in, in the foreign world, like uh, in the U.S. and other places, because it is virtually impossible for any institute to raise uh, money from the IGFs to, to, to purchase, for instance, a molecular beam epitaxy machine, which may be like six million or seven million dollars, right? And uh, others like, uh, the electron beam lithography equipment, which would be like $3.2 million, right? So it becomes very difficult uh, for the institutes and universities themselves to acquire these. Uh, so uh, we, we, are not far from, we are not far from saying that uh, we are very handicapped uh, when it comes to equipment and machinery for innovative uh, ideas. Mm -hmm. 
But Fabi, how do we bridge this gap? I mean, what do you recommend that uh, we do, especially at the government level? Because Dr. Ashali has uh, explained that uh, there's no way institutions and universities can actually uh, raise that kind of money needed for the equipments that you need for your work. It means that government has to put in place measures. Uh, government has to raise uh, those funds to make sure you have the equipment to work with. What's your recommendation uh, so we can bridge this gap? Well, my recommendation is that uh, we need um, good policies, so public policies, which will look, um, which will take critical look at funding of universities um, in regard to science and technology and innovation. So that is one area. We need to also constantly engage government. Uh, we have to invite the ministers onto our campuses. Uh, during open days so they will see the areas we are working and the innovations and the prototypes there so that they will come to terms with uh, the research we are doing. We, will, we also have to, through government, engage with uh, industrial players, right, because they know that when they engage the university, they might um, have tax holidays or tax reductions. So this is very, very important. We need to also find time as a university researchers to go to the critical, some of the um, uh, government sectors that we work with, like uh, Ministry of Science, Technology and Innovation, Ministry of Energy, etc., etc. We need to go to those ministries um, get the opportunity to make presentations on uh, some of our research and development works so that they know exactly what we are doing and they will understand the application areas. Because they, they, they manage our taxes. So uh, much as we acknowledge the fact that, uh, I mean, at the national level, we are all limited to funding. Government has a big appetite. And uh, we work in a state uh, university, so everything is funded by government, and therefore there's the need to constantly engage government so they will know and see the need for funding of uh, scientific research. Certainly, if this dialogue and engagement uh, becomes very fruitful, it is the nation that will develop. We are partnering with government to train young people, right? So once we uh, resourced through government funding, we'll be able to train more young people. We'll be able to create the the um, ability to to develop products um, through our research and development. And uh, like I said, uh, the nation will be the beneficiary. I'm grateful for your time, Professor Georgia Obing, as dean of School of Engineering, uh, the. Uh, Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. Dr. Erika Shali, I'm grateful for your time as well. He's with the Center for Scientific and Industrial Research. and uh, We've had a very wonderful conversation on scientific innovations. Uh, we'll take a break. When we return, we'll bring you the very latest from the world of sports.